A long time ago, back in the late 90s, the way we did layout was by using what we called tables. Now, tables are still around today, and we're going to show you how to use those in a future video. They're very quite simple, but think of it like a spreadsheet where we would have kind of a grid and we might take two cells and merge them together and then you know leave one for a navigation and one for our content and merge all the bottoms for a footer of sorts and that worked except for every time we wanted to make changes we had to update every single page you know their layout in HTML and there's a whole heap of other problems that came with tables but they have their time and place still today in data layout and we'll talk about that again in a future video but we phased that out and what we replaced it with <clears throat> was with floats and floats kind of like we learned about allow us to take uh, an item of content and float it to the left or float it to the right and and let content kind of wrap around it and that was fine um, we know how to use it and we use it still in kind of you know we want an image inside of our content to float to the side and let our content wrap around it and it still has its place and so we still learn that but we we don't use this for page layout the same way we used to we also had another way we laid pages out, and that was using positioning types. <clears throat> Whether that be through relative positioning, absolute positioning, um, fixed positioning, and sticky, which is kind of newer, you know, each of them have their time and place, and we can still use them for certain things, but we didn't really lay page pages out with that anymore. <clears throat> we also had another one where what we call um, CSS gr uh, framework grids. Um, and, and what this was is a bunch of CSS that other people typically would write, and it would set up um, a 12 column layout, okay? And each of these columns would be floated to the left. And we could go through and say, we want a logo and we want it to occupy the space of three columns. And we want a navigation to occupy the space of six columns and we want you know, a search bar to occupy the space of three here, and then we would kind of lay out our columns, right, or our, our content that way. And because each of these columns, um, you know, were floated left, if we shrink down the screen, um, this navigation, because it was also floated left, would pop underneath logo, and search would pop underneath navigation, and they would stack, and, and it was great, you know, and that wasn't that long ago we used it. If, if anybody is familiar with Bootstrap, or some of these different um, you know, tools out there, frameworks out there that we can use. This is what they're built on. But today, we've moved beyond this to something much more powerful and really what we use looking forward as far as page layout goes. And that is what we call the CSS grid or native grid, okay? And, and we're gonna show you that today um, in a series of videos. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a grid to this this photo gallery here and then we're going to apply a grid in a future video to our entire page and let that control the page layout of everything together so <clears throat> in order to change this over from flexbox which we have it on right now into grid it's important to cover a couple concepts one just like flexbox um, you have to maintain the parent child relationship okay Meaning, if you want um, this image of the mandrel and the squirrel monkey to show inside that grid, it's got to be a direct child of, of gallery, okay? And so let's go through, and you're going to see a lot of similarities between Flexbox and Grid. We're going to first change this over to Grid. Um, we're going to take off these. These are all flex items here. And we'll leave our border on and we'll leave our images at 200 pixels and we'll refresh that. And you can see here we have a one column grid that goes down the page. <clears throat> now, if we want to change that into two column grid, we've got to use our first thing. And that's going to be grid template columns. And let's say that we want um, a column of 250 pixels. And we'll save that and look at that. And that just created our first column of 250 pixels. So you can see where our grid is inside the light gray. And you can see our first column going down the screen um, of 250 pixels. Now, if we want two columns, we go to grid template columns and we create a second one. And we say that one is going to be 250 pixels. And we'll refresh it. And you can see it 
you know, going on there. And if we want a third, then we do the same thing. We say that's going to be 250 pixels and refresh it and you can see the third. And so what it's doing is it's going to, as it's going down, each individual child, as it's going down each one of those, it just kind of fills it in as it kind of goes along and, and just kind of fills in the space doing what it needs to do. Now we can, you know, in relation to this grid template um, columns, we can also do a grid dash template rows and we can tell it how tall we want each row to be. And so maybe we want uh, the first row to be, let's just go as easy as 250 pixels, 250 pixels. Oops, that one's 205. And that will just break out um, our thing. Now, we can change these. So maybe this one here, we want it to be 150 pixels. And you can see that one's 150 pixels, and it's cutting off a bunch of that image. Now, we... We probably shouldn't do that, and we're going to show you in a later video on how to do this. But if we want our images to automatically resize to the content we have, we can change the width of each image to be 100%. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it fill out to the size uh, of its parent. And so this one is 250 pixels, and this image is right now 200 pixels, so that should resize bigger and you can see how that became larger and this one became smaller um, that one fills out that, that size now because the row height is 250 pixels we can't see the words underneath and so it might actually be best just to take off the rows for right now and let it automatically kind of fill out each one um, but you can see you know where we have different size columns in there you know maybe this last one we want it to be 350 pixels we can make that one a little bit bigger um, how these you know grid template columns can be established and how this content will automatically fill into those now we're going to show you a lot more details later on on how to deal um, with content but that's a really simple way to add rows and columns and just first establish your grid and what that's going to look like